So next we have Jennifer Ho, who is one of our advanced heart failure uh, doctors who's been particularly interested in heart failure with preserved ejection fraction, is going to talk to us about the role of pulmonary hypertension in that context. Jen, thanks so much. So thank you very much for the opportunity to speak here today. Um, as a heart failure cardiologist, one of the biggest clinical dilemmas we face on a daily basis is really how to treat heart failure with preserved ejection fraction, or HEFPEF. And it turns out that a large proportion of patients with HEFPEF have concomitant pulmonary hypertension, which makes their clinical management even more challenging. And so over the next 10 minutes, I'd like to focus on two points. First, I'd like to show you that obesity and cardiometabolic disease are active contributors to the development of pulmonary hypertension in HEFPEF. And second, I'd like to outline some of the newer research approaches we're taking to try to better understand drivers of this process. And the overarching goal of our laboratory really is to use translational approaches and patient-oriented studies to better understand underlying mechanisms driving HEFPEF uh, subphenotypes. And ultimately, our goal is really to develop targeted therapies for this very difficult disease. So to set the stage, we all appreciate that heart failure is associated with a substantial burden of morbidity and mortality. So why is HEFPEF specifically such a major unmet clinical need? Well, first, HEFPEF is common. These are data from the AHA Get With The Guidelines registry. And you can see that if we project out current trends, that of patients we see as clinicians with heart failure in the hospital, the majority of them are going to have HEFPEF. The second important thing to realize is that there are currently no available therapies that have been shown to improve clinical outcomes in patients with HEFPEF. The problem, in large part, is that HEFPEF is a very heterogeneous disease entity. And so it can affect the heart, but also multiple organ systems outside of the heart. And so for the remainder of this talk, we're going to focus on one such HEFPEF subphenotype, and that is HEFPEF with pulmonary hypertension. So as I mentioned before, pulmonary hypertension can be common. In one series, up to 80% of patients with HEFPEF have concomitant pulmonary hypertension. And when present, pulmonary hypertension portends a much worse prognosis among patients with HEFPEF as shown in the Kaplan-Meier curves below. The reason why some patients with HEFPEF develop pulmonary hypertension while others don't are not completely understood. But our group and others have shown that obesity and cardiometabolic disease are likely active players in this process. In previous human autopsy-based studies, for example, obesity um, is associated in the majority of patients with histologic changes in the pulmonary vasculature, including medial hypertrophy, and muscularization of the pulmonary arterioles. Along the same lines, when we look at our human cohorts, we see that a combination of obesity, in particular with metabolic syndrome, is also associated with much higher rates of pulmonary hypertension. And what we've observed in the past is that PA pressure elevation, in this case, is in large part due to intrinsic elevations in pulmonary vascular resistance, again, supporting a link between pulmonary vascular remodeling and HEFPEF. There are a number of interesting animal models that have been published upon. Um, mice of various genetic backgrounds, when fed a high-fat di diet, also develop obesity, insulin resistance, and pulmonary hypertension. And what I think is really interesting is that the pulmonary vascular remodeling in these mouse models can be rescued with various metabolic interventions, including PPAR gamma agonists, metformin, and adiponectin. So what we postulate is that obesity leads to pulmonary hypertension via several different mechanisms, including insulin resistance, adipokine signaling, and inflammation. In order to really study these pathways in humans, we've developed a new protocol to isolate and collect PA endothelial cells from patients with HEFPEF. This enables us to really interrogate potential underlying mechanisms that are driving human disease. So to take a step back, PA endothelial cells are really integral in the pathobiology of pulmonary hypertension. And in fact, PA endothelial cells are explicitly regulated by insulin itself. So when insulin binds to the cell surface of the endothelial cell, it activates the insulin receptor, downstream PI3 kinase and AKT, which then leads to phosphorylation of endothelial nitric oxide synthase and elaboration of nitric oxide and vasodilation. It's also been shown that adiponectin further uh, modulates insulin-mediated vasodilation. So 
So when adiponectin binds its cell surface receptor on the endothelial cell, um, it phosphorylates AMP kinase, which then further elaborates ENOS phosphorylation. We are now, uh, what we postulate is that in human insulin resistance and obesity, both of these pathways are inhibited. This then leads to, in effect, PA endothelial cell dysfunction, uh, leading to vasoconstriction and downstream pulmonary vascular remodeling. We're now able to directly test these mechanisms in patients with HEFPEF that undergo right heart catheterization by isolating and collecting PA endothelial cells from the tip of a pulmonary artery catheter at the end of the procedure. Each cell collection yields on the order of 1,000 to 3,000 cells, and these cells previously have been shown by our collaborators to be endothelial and phenotype, both by fax analysis and by gene expression profiling. Uh, here's a representative cell and what these cells look like under immunofluorescent staining. So you can see the nucleus stained in blue, um, phosphoenos is stained in red and localizes to the cytoplasm, and von Willebrand's factor is staining in green, again confirming endothelial cell phenotype. What I think is really special is that we can then take freshly collected cells from patients with HEFPEF, and we can subject the cells to metabolic interventions to look at cellular responses. One of the active protocols in our laboratory currently is insulin stimulation, an, uh, an assay of downstream phosphoenos activation. This is, if you will, a readout of PA endothelial cell insulin resistance. We can also concomitantly uh, incubate cells with metformin to really interrogate whether insulin resistance at the level of the PA endothelial cell can be modulated by pharmacologic agents. Another, I think, unique aspect of our laboratory is that patients who undergo PA endothelial cell collection will also uh, undergo concomitant uh, cardiopulmonary exercise testing. And this is important because patients with HEFPEF often have uh, normal resting hemodynamics, and so exercise is really the primary way by which we can uncover abnormalities in their cardiopulmonary reserve. And so now we're able to really uh, combine cell-based phenotyping from these patients directly with human physiology. And so we can begin to answer questions like, does PA endothelial cell insulin resistance directly relate to abnormal pulmonary hemodynamics? And this could be uh, seen by a steeper PA pressure by cardiac output curve, as shown in red here, during exercise. And so I think the ability to really, again, integrate ex vivo PA endothelial cell studies with uh, cardiopulmonary physiology, I think, is a very powerful paradigm by which we can really learn more about underlying mechanisms driving pulmonary hypertension in HEFPEF. So in sum, HEFPEF is a disease that's increasing in prevalence for which we have no available therapies. I think our laboratory is uniquely positioned to try to answer a small part of this major unmet clinical need. Uh, we're now capable of studying patients with HEFPEF, isolating uh, their PA endothelial cells, and studying these cells ex vivo. I think this is special in two ways. First, um, these cells, uh, with these cells, we can really directly interrogate mechanisms of human disease. We can also use these cells to potentially test cellular responses to potential therapies for HEFPEF. And then ultimately, we'd like to adopt a discovery-based approach, uh, whereby we can, for example, collect cells from patients with and without pulmonary hypertension and look at differences in gene expression profiling, for example, to really uh, glean a much broader uh, picture of other pathways that might be contributing to this disease process. So finally, we're really excited um, to really harness the potential of this platform in the future in several different ways. I think uh, this platform has the ability to refine our current HEFPEF subphenotypes and potentially guide future clinical trial design focused around patients with HEFPEF. And in particular, I think uh, this platform has the ability to potentially inform patient selection uh, based on cell-based phenotyping. Second, I think ex vivo PA endothelial cell studies have also the potential to really um, elaborate and uh, inform drug discovery and screening strategies in the future. And ultimately, our final goal is really to develop new and individualized therapies for HEFPEF. Thank you for your attention.